Hi and welcome to Themico. In this video, we will finalize the topic which is related to determining internal loadings in the investigated structures and how to draw the corresponding diagrams. This time, we will discuss about the relations between a distributed loading, a shear force, and a bending moment. We will also learn how to apply the knowledge we have gained during the previous two videos to create a shear force diagram and a bending moment diagram in the problem situations where the investigated structure is subjected to the distributed load. Let's get started. As was mentioned in the previous video, defining a shear force and a bending moment diagram in the distributed loading situation is more complicated than in situations where the structure is only subjected to an external point load. Let's find out the reason for this. As you may remember from the previous video, we learned that a shear force is actually a first order derivative of the bending moment. Now think about the following question. If the bending moment diagram will follow the second order of differential equations, would this mean that a distributed load would perhaps be a second order derivative of the bending moment? Yes, it would. Thus, it also means that a distributed load will cause a parabolic moment distribution into the bending moment diagram where the load has an effect. The distributed load will also cause a linearly varied shear force into the shear force diagram at the same location it created a parabolic moment because of the relation which is that the distributed load is a first order derivative of the shear force. One thing that is good for you to also know is that the distributed load usually causes a negative bending moment because of the downward direction where the load is usually pointing at. If you remember the memory rules related to the moment which were presented a couple of times in earlier videos, you understand why. If we are looking at the right side of the structure section, then the distributed load causes a negative moment because the direction of the moment which it creates is clockwise. At the left side of the section, the load will then create a counterclockwise moment which causes the moment to be negative again. Now that you are familiar with the relations between a distributed load, a shear force, and a bending moment, we can start to look at how to define corresponding diagrams in a situation where the investigated structure is subjected to a distributed load. As was mentioned, this is not as clear as in external point loading situations. Thus, we need to form shear force and moment equations for every investigated section of the structure as a function of x, which is marked as an arbitrary point in the length of the structure. We'll use the shear force equation to find zero points where the shear force crosses the horizontal axis of the shear force diagram. Because of the existing relation between shear force and a moment, those points will be candidate points for the maximum and minimum values of the moment diagram. Note that the candidate points can also be located where the point moment is acting on the structure. To solve the support reactions, which affect the structure, it's recommended that you determine the equivalent force, Fr, from the distributed load, which helps you to solve the reactions. After you have solved the support reactions, you can ignore this equivalent force and return back to the original distributed load. Now you should be able to determine the shear force and the bending moment diagram. By using the knowledge that you have learned before about determining these diagrams, you can determine values for the shear force and moment by using the corresponding equations which you have formed for each investigated section of the structure. After you have drawn the diagrams, verify them by checking that your diagrams comply with the rules that have been mentioned in the previous videos. If they comply, then most likely your obtained diagrams are correct. If they are not, then you should check your support reactions or the shear and moment equations. Just remember that if you derive your moment equation, this should lead to the shear equation that you have formed because of their existing relation. Hopefully, after watching this video, you are familiar with the relations that a distributed load, a shear load, and a bending moment share with each other. You are also able to determine a shear force and bending moment diagram in a situation where the structure is subjected to a distributed load. Generally speaking, after watching the three videos concentrating on this topic, you should have a good understanding of how to determine different internal loadings in different structures, and how to draw the corresponding diagrams. For encouraging you to learn this topic well, Remember that this topic is one of the most fundamental pillars in mechanical engineering, and especially in the area of structural design. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.